Hello guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this daisy pin. It's very very tiny and the reason I decided to make this pin is because spring is coming soon. So you can see it's so tiny, almost uh, <laughs> the same size as my thumb. And here's how it looks in the back. can pull this out. In this tutorial, here are the materials that you will need. First off, embroidery thread. These are six strand embroidery thread in yellow and also in white color. You will also need 1.5 mm hook. If you don't have this exact one, you can use anywhere in between 1.5 to 2.0 mm hook. Scissors, embroidery needle, this one in particular has a very small eye pin. If you have trouble inserting the thread into the needle, just get the one with bigger eye pin. Butterfly clutch pin. Let me show you up close. You would also need a paper towel just for us to be able to clean off the glue on. And lastly, super glue gel. I'm using Gorilla Glue. While using this glue, I highly recommend be very careful. If your hand has the glue on, do not touch your eyes. That could be really not good. Uh, you could also try to wear a glove while using the glue. However, if the glue gets on your hand and things like that, you can clean it off using nail polish remover. Before we start making this daisy pin, I just want to let you know that if this is your first time crocheting, you will first need to know all of these stitches and basic techniques. If you need additional help, please check out my Amigurumi 101 playlist. I have tutorials in a much slower pace going through each stitch type in detail so that you can know those before you make this pin however if you have crochet for a while now you should find this tutorial very simple to follow let's start off with the yellow embroidery thread first we're going to make a new loop and the way you do that is by crossing the yarn over. I might be using the word yarn and thread interchangeably even though this is embroidery thread so pardon me you simply cross the yarn over like this it would form a loop and then you would hold the intersection piece and fold it down now grab your hook and under this piece of yarn in the middle you basically would pull it in Put your hook under and then pull it in like this and while you do that grab the two end of the yarn so you can see that now you have some sort of a loop the loop is pretty big uh, respect to the hook size so what you can do now is this is the shorter end hold that and then on the longer end you're going to pull You can see now that the loop is a lot smaller, so this would be the starting point for us. Next, let's chain two times. So yarn over hook and then pull through the loop. There's one chain, yarn over hook again, and then pull through the next. So this is two chain now that we have the two chains let's make seven single crochet into that very first chain this one the chain next to hook is called a second chain so in the first let's insert our hook into that and to make a single crochet you're going to put your yarn over the hook and then pull through that loop notice how right now we have the two loops 
yarn over hook again and then pull through both loops one two so this is called a single crochet you're going to repeat six more times so push your hook into that first chain the same chain again yarn over hook and then pull through you will have two loops yarn over hook and then pull through again so that's second single crochet going to keep repeating that so I'm making the third single crochet right now so pull through and then pull through both loops that's the third single crochet and then let's make the fourth single crochet now I'm on to the fifth single crochet okay the sixth single crochet and then the seventh single crochet Once we get to this point, um, basically going to finish off. For people who are familiar with magic ring, you can do seven single crochet in the magic ring as well. The result would be exact same. I just like to chain two and make single crochet that way, which I personally find it to be a lot easier. Now. To finish off, simply cut out the yarn. You could leave a little bit of length so that we have enough tail to sew the yarn. And then simply pull out your hook just like that so you can see that the two tail of the yarn. And then that's your piece that you just made. Next, what we're going to do is secure the yarn piece where you just finished off. You can see that this portion, if you move it side by side, it kind of, you know, keep coming out, right? You want the edge to be smooth and clean and secure. So what I'm going to do here is insert this piece of yarn into the needle. Just like that. And then we'll come here to see where you just finish off. If you count the number of total stitch, this would be the first one that you made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. The way you secure this edge is you wanna skip that first stitch and then on the second stitch, just insert the needle right under the two loops. I'm sorry if this is a little bit hard to see, but since the piece is so small, it's kind of hard to capture on camera. Okay, now that we insert that needle there, next thing would be to insert the needle on the seventh stitch in between the two loops so that's the top i mean you can think of this as the front loop and then that as the back loop so you want to go in between okay okay it still looks like a circle basically Flip it to the back side. You want to be able to pick up anywhere on the back side uh, near the middle. You want to pick up a little bit of the yarn so you can secure that yarn 
right under somewhere in the middle now I'm simply just gonna cut this tail short you can see that okay we have a circle now and then in the back is how it looks like next we're going to be making the petal so on the second round let's start off by inserting the hook to one of the stitch on the circle it doesn't matter exactly where I'm gonna put it in like that and then grab some light yarn put it over the hook and then you just pull it through now just make sure that you kind of you know hold on that shorter end so the yarn don't like become too loose okay so next step would be to just chain four times so one two three four next let's make three single crochet on the chains that you just made typically when you chains you want to always skip the chain closest to your hook because it's practically impossible to make anything in it so on the second one next to the hook is where you want to start now just make a single crochet and then repeat two more times in the next two chains okay so now that you made three single crochet on the next stitch in yellow color let's push our hook in there here before we make the next stitch we also need to secure the tail where we started off you're going to put that short end of the tail wrap over the hook like that and then kind of hold it in so when we make the next stitch it uh, automatically secure that tail for us so it doesn't become loose now let's make a slip stitch so yarn over hook and then pull through and simply bring that first loop into the second loop by just pulling through Okay, now we got the first petal. To make the second petal, the process is technically the same. You're going to chain four once again. So one, two, three, four. And then make three single crochet on that chain. That's one, two, three. Then push your hook onto the next stitch of the yellow part. Make a slip stitch there. So now we have two petals. Going to repeat it for a next couple of times so that you get familiar with this process. 
Starting the third petal, let's chain four. One, two, three, four. Make three single crochet on the chain. One. Two. Three. Push the hook into the next stitch of the circle in yellow. Make a slip stitch. And now we have three petals. Chain four to make the next petal. And make three single crochet on that chain. Push the hook into the next stitch in yellow, make a slip stitch. Okay, you can now see that the petal is starting to go around the stem portion. We just need to make three more petals. Again, chain four times. One, two, three, four. And then make three single crochet. One, two, three. Slip stitch on the next yellow stitch. We have five petal now. Chain four, two, three, four. Make three single crochet. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six petal in total. Going to make four chains and then three single crochet. Now, in the next stitch, it's going to be uh, this one right here, where we're starting off. Make a slip stitch. And once we are done, let's cut off a long tail so we can finish off. And pull that out just like that. We'll clean up the tail very soon but as you may notice the number of petals is slightly different from the one that I show you in the very beginning this is another daisy flower that I made and in here you can see that they have one two three four five six seven eight eight petals why this one only have seven so the way you want to be able to make eight is you'll have to make eight single crochet when you were making your stem portion i think that's what it's called a yellow circle so you could increase the number of stitches there in order to make more petals in your flower but in this tutorial i just want to show seven of them okay now to clean off 
the tails attaching to your flower what you're going to do is insert that long end of the tail into the needle once again and you can see how like the stuff up here on the top I'm simply gonna insert the needle going from the front side into the back side and then pull through and I'm going this is on the back side I'm simply gonna pick up a little bit of the yellow yarn so I can hide or secure my white yarn right under all right gonna pull it tight and then once I'm done I'm simply gonna cut that tail off all right now do the same for the short end of the yarn just gonna find a spot I can pick up the yellow yarn insert that tail into the needle and then pull through and then I'm going to cut it real short you don't need to worry so much about the yarn coming back out because on this part we're gonna apply some glue anyway so technically the yarn will get glue and it should be secure in place okay now it's time to apply the glue to the back of the flower before you use the glue make sure to shake well i'm going to be <laughs> shaking this a lot and also you also want to wipe off any excess glue that um, got on your tip to the paper towel as well since you don't want to over apply the glue on your flower all right i think you can see that i've squeezed a little bit of the glue i'm simply gonna Sprayed it out on the back side very gently and do not put too much because it could change the color of your yarn if you do that. And right in the middle, I'm gonna add a drop of glue onto this since we want the pin to be on slightly hard but there's like a drop in the middle now simply grab like that part of the pin and we're going to just stick it on in the middle and then press it down hold it for a few seconds make sure it's really stick on but this glue will take some time to dry. I usually like it to leave it for an hour or two. Make sure it's completely dry. Right now, I'm just using a scissor to help me press it down a little. So now that uh, this has stick on, you simply just leave it for an hour or two for it to dry. Do not put this back portion onto that yet because when the glue is not dry, it can whiten that part of the metal which you don't really want. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe. That would really help my channel out. And if you would like to see a specific tutorial in the future, please comment down below. I read every single comment, even if I don't respond to everyone. Thank you.